Holyfield didn't throw a punch, but he watched two opponents get knocked out of the title picture recently. The champ was originally scheduled to meet Iron Mike Tyson earlier this month, but that fight was postponed when Tyson injured his ribs. Holyfield was then scheduled to meet Francisco Damiani next Saturday night in Atlanta, but Damiani is pulled out because of a sprained ankle. So now Holyfield turns his attention to Burt Cooper. Fighting a guy like Damiani, I knew I was going to have to make the fight, and I don't want to have more time to set up. Fighting a guy like Burt Cooper, I don't have the time to set up. I have to be ready to fight from the open bell. It's quite different, but, you know, I'm a boxer. And I, can, I can drop and I can change, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Probably saying, just who is Burt Cooper? Well, that's smoking Burt Cooper. 25 years of age, 26 and 7, 23 knockouts. More of the size of Mike Tyson, not Damiani. You see Cooper here fighting Ray Mercer. He lost the 12-round fight to Mercer August 5th, 1990. He has won his last four meetings and, of course, just coming off that impressive victory against the always dangerous Joe Hip in Atlantic City. Cooper expected to arrive in Atlanta Sunday night. He will work out on Monday afternoon at the Omni, where the fight is scheduled for Saturday night. Big news, heavyweight champ Evander Holyfield just can't seem to pick a fight with anybody, can he? First, Mike Tyson pulled out of their early November bout due to rib injuries. And now the man called up to stand in for Tyson, Italian Francesco Damiani, has withdrawn from his November 23rd meeting with Holyfield because of an injured ankle. Although Damiani received three medical opinions to the contrary, he decided to pull out because he wouldn't be 100%. And that leaves Holyfield with yet another opponent. Smokin' Burt Cooper, a brawler from Salem, Virginia, will meet Holyfield Saturday night at the Omni in Atlanta. I truly believe once I start training, and, you know, that's going to work. And, and after three or four weeks, you know, you want to fight somebody. Because it's like, regardless, because I truly feel that it's not a fight itself is what I actually get paid for. I feel that I actually get paid for the preparation because the preparation is a lot harder than just going out there and fight. The preparation might change a bit now. Cooper has a 26-7 and record with 23 knockouts. He not only has the knockout punch that Damiani lacks, but Cooper's also considerably shorter. He's built more like a Mike Tyson. That means the champ just might have to step up his workouts this week against some shorter sparring partners, and certainly will have to switch his strategy a bit. The WBA and the IBF are both expected to sanction the 12th round fight as a championship bout sometime on Monday. Well, Mike Tyson and Don King were in Atlanta today, passing out turkey to the homeless. They'll be in Washington tomorrow doing the same thing in New York on Friday. It was no coincidence, however, that Tyson and King were in Atlanta just three days before Holyfield meets Burt Cooper, a fight which King considers a turkey. What he's doing is an insult to everybody. Listen, Nobody, every dollar you're spending to go see Holyfield fight this bum that he ain't ranked by no organization should be used to feed the hungry Listen. and house the poor Listen. and the underprivileged. Holyfield should knock him out within two rounds, maybe one. But if I fought him, I would kill him. I question the good sense of any person or organization which would permit a convicted killer, Don King, or a man facing a possible 63 years in prison, Mike Tyson, to use them to insult one of Atlanta's true heroes, Evander Holyfield. I believe it is despicable for King and Tyson to come here to Atlanta for the express purpose of exploiting an extremely worthwhile cause for their own sleazy needs. Well, already Dula and King are doing a nice job of posturing for an eventual Holyfield-Tyson fight, but Tyson's next battle's in Indianapolis on January 27th. If Tyson is cleared of the rape charges, look for Holyfield-Tyson in the spring, late March or early April, more than likely. ...in situation for the champ and a no-way situation for the challenger. If Evander Holyfield knocks out Smokin' Bird Cooper in the early rounds, people will say he fought a stiff. If Holyfield struggles, people will want to know what happened to the champ. Promoters have tried to portray Cooper as another Mike Tyson. He does resemble the former champ in size, but that's where the similarities come to an end. Burt Cooper weighs 215 pounds. Holyfield, who will earn $6 million for the payday, has to mentally adjust to fighting a journeyman instead of Mike Tyson. Heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield, weighs in at 210 pounds. Well, listen to the crowd. Cooper will have a five-pound weight advantage over Holyfield, but he will be at a decided disadvantage with at least one Las Vegas betting parlor making book on the bout. Cooper is a 22-to-1 underdog. A little later on during this hour-long sports center...
We will strike up the band and profile the champ who is still fighting for respect. Welcome back to Sports Center. Back to boxing. Mike Tyson's Turkey Tour continued today in Washington, D.C., where he and his promoter, Don King, were handing out food to the needy. But Tyson was also dishing out some food for thought on Evander Holyfield's upcoming bout. It's a joke. It's a big joke. And if that's how much, you know I mean, consideration he has for the heavyweight championship to fight someone like Burke Cooper who quits. Burke Cooper the only, um, he's not even unranked. Burke Cooper quits. He's not even qualified to fight for the title. He's a quitter. Tyson and King will be in New York on Friday. Their turkey tour will continue into the Midwest next week. Chris? Chris? Okay, well, Evander Holyfield stepping in the ring without Mike Tyson will pick up between 6 and $8 million Saturday night. The former Olympic boxer will be fighting in his hometown of Atlanta with his mother close by. But Annie Holyfield won't attend the fight. In fact, she never does. Here's Charlie Steiner and the champ and the mom behind him, the most important person in his life. Because Holyfield Tyson is not likely to happen anytime soon, this fist fight back in April in Atlantic City will be remembered as the boxing event of the year in 1991. And even though Evander Holyfield was unable to knock out George Foreman, again raising questions about his legitimacy as a true heavyweight, it is fair to say that Holyfield doesn't need to knock the other guy into kingdom come to be satisfied. If I did knock him out in that first round, which could have been a, a good shot, people say, well, he was old, he was this and that. But George Form got a, got the opportunity to prove that he was tough. But I got uh, I got the opportunity to prove that I was very skillful. That it didn't take a knockout punch, and I could assault the punches if I got hit. And I was able to to show show people all the different techniques I had. I'm proud to be the heavyweight champion of the world, but I'm even more proud that I didn't quit. As as time in my life that that you know I, I start to quit. People always told me I was a nice guy. So, but, you know, nice guys don't win, don't ever come in first. And they, and they would tell me that face to face. And say, well, yeah, he's a nice guy, but he just don't have a killer instinct for the ring. He shouldn't be here. I hate for the young guy to get hurt. All my life, I, I was amateur. I was always under somebody. Somebody was always better. And I can understand 1990 is the only year that someone wasn't better. I was the better man in 1990. The most important person in the world to Evander Holyfield is his mother, Annie. The best fighter on earth receives his strength from this small woman who has made a large impact on his life. My mother told me never quit. My mother said, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But don't quit, don't let it defeat you. And I never quit. As a mother, I mean, how do you feel when when Evander's about ready to get into the ring and fight? Oh, I'm on tag when he get ready to go in. <clears throat> I don't be looking at it. I go in my room and shut the door. I be trying to they, uh, keep him here. And... Well, you're not watching the fight. No. What are you What are you doing? I'm fighting, too, because I'm trying to push it out in my mind that he out there fight. I ain't looking at him. I'm in the room, but it's in my mind. I want to take it out. So I lay down on the floor, and I close my ear. After a while, I say, Lord, take care of me. I know when it's over with, I'm just as old as he is. Now, that's, that's why I be in the room. Holyfield will be fighting in Atlanta on Saturday night. But as usual, his mother won't be there. While her son is busy throwing punches, she'll be in her room praying he doesn't get hurt. I'm Charlie Steiner, ESPN. And again, the fight Saturday night. Charlie Steiner will provide fight coverage here on ESPN Saturday night and Sunday. Champ Evander Holyfield has had time to reflect on his career with a possibility looming that he may never fight Mike Tyson. Holyfield has even allowed himself to hint at retirement. But first comes his second title defense in his hometown of Atlanta on Saturday night against a stand-in for Tyson's stand-in, journeyman Burt Cooper. Cooper's only chance with Holyfield seems to lie in a big left hook. But then again, Holyfield hasn't been knocked off his feet since he was an amateur back in 1979. 
a long time ago. And recently, the champ looked back at all those years with our Nick Charles. Has the heavyweight champion of the world run out of opponents already? Hardly. But Evander Holyfield isn't about to run from anybody. And even though it took him 20 years to be the heavyweight champion, he remembers that first punch like it was yesterday. I was eight years old. I was a kid. And it was, it's, it was a little easier then because of the fact that I was going against someone that I pretty much knew I could beat. And, um, you know, and just went out just swinging. He was the type of child that he just didn't feel danger. Holofield kept boxing largely because he didn't make the football team. So at 16, I, I said, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and box, go ahead and be the heavyweight champion of the world. That time by holding Holyfield. Right hand stuns Douglas! But the spark that produced a roaring fire in Holyfield came out of a burning need as the youngest of eight children to be somebody. I was one of them guys that always did my all. And, and sometimes it just seemed that my all was never good enough. And so that's when I got into sports. I oh, I told I'm with you all the way. That ain't what I'd like for you to do, but I'm with you every step of the way. Annie Holofield is an enduring part of this story. And Evander has an unsurpassed love and adoration for his mother because she raised eight children on her own and worked sun up to sundown. I taught my children this, whatever you do and what, do a good job. Don't have to. A lot of times I wanted to quit because things got hard, things got tough. But my mother always told me anything worth having is hard work. And I try to tell them this, to treat everybody as you wish to be treated. Turning beliefs into behavior is the key, of course. And that's probably why Holofield, beyond boxing, wins the title of most decent man around, a sport where decency is an aberration. I think the average person would think I'm quiet. I might think that uh, I'm to myself a lot and think that I'm kind of boring. Really? Yeah. But if Holofield's image isn't compelling, what should we know about him that we don't? I'm a exciting person. Yeah. I think in general when a person really get to know me, know that I'm, I'm very warm and, and I don't have a hostile attitude if you get to know me. I think people feel that just because I'm quiet and I don't smile a lot that, you know, I'm having problems, but I don't have any problems. A divorced father of three children who stay most of the week with him, Holofield lives quietly in a hundred acre farm just south of Atlanta and says success hasn't changed him, only the people around him. Except, of course, the person who's known him all his life. Well, he tough out there, but he, uh, he's still my baby. But if it all ended for him tomorrow... If I don't fight no more, I would, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm a content person. All I need now is to just make it to heaven and everything would be great. So there is life after boxing after all. And Evander Holofield sounds like a man with a ringside seat. Nick Charles, CNN Sports. Holyfield is an overwhelming 22 to 1 favorite to retain his title Saturday night against the former protege of Joe Frazier. And Fred Hickman will be ringside and report live from the fight on Sports Tonight at Saturday at 11 p.m. Eastern. Boxing means champions. Boxing means tradition. Boxing means HBO. Evander Holyfield, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. The challenger, smoking Burt Cooper. World Championship Boxing, as it can only be seen live on HBO. And next month, the man who took the champ the distance, George Foreman battles Jimmy Ellis. Holyfield Cooper, Saturday night at 10.10 on HBO.
Georgia is on a sports roll. A little over a year ago, a startling announcement. The International Olympic Committee has awarded the 1996 Olympic Games to the city of Atlanta. This year's Hall Classic. For the first time, a professional franchise from the capital of the New South played for a championship. Outside, Peachtree and Marietta streets are empty, much as was the case during the Fall Classic. Attention switches tonight from Fulton County Stadium to where we are live from the Omni in Atlanta as HBO Sports continues to present World Championship Boxing. And now the main event. Undisputed heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield puts two of his three belts on the line against heavyweight Burt Cooper. The battle is scheduled for 12 rounds. We bring you back inside this massive indoor arena and the last significant heavyweight fight in this city, we remind you, was Muhammad Ali's comeback fight after his three and a half year retirement due to his refusal to be inducted into the armed services. October 26, 1970, the greatest was given the go-ahead to fight by the Georgia Commission and stopped Jerry Quarry on cuts in three rounds as he moved toward his battle with Joe Frazier in Madison Square Garden the following year. Welcome back once again, and once again with us sitting in for George Foreman tonight, one of the greatest of all time in his own right, trainer, manager, and boxing commentator Gil Clancy. Gil, run down the dangers for Evander Holyfield now as he takes on an opponent that I'm sure most of our viewing audience has never heard of, Smoking well, Burt Cooper. He has to be a little mixed up. He started training for Mike Tyson, a short, muscular guy, fast hands, then they changed the opponent was Francesco Damiani, a guy that's not a big puncher, a tall guy, reputedly a good boxer. Damiani fell out, now he's back to the short guy again, a guy that's a dangerous guy and a dangerous puncher. Uh, it can uh, prove a minus for uh, Evander Holyfield, the fact that he's been looking at training for Damiani, and then he went back to Cooper. And the other minus, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that he's fighting in front of his hometown folks. It could be a plus, it could be a minus. Sometimes when these guys fight in front of their hometown folks, they get a little uptight. They try a little to do a little better than they can do. If he stays self-contained and is the real Evander Holyfield, the real deal, he should get the job done. There are fight fans who would say if Holyfield lost tonight, well, he wasn't a real heavyweight champion anyway. He never fought Mike Tyson. How do you assess Evander Holyfield at this stage of his career? I think Evander Holyfield is a real good, solid heavyweight champion of the world. He doesn't have to fight Mike Tyson. He has to fight whoever the best guy is out there. And we mentioned the word history. He will go down in history if he continues to win. And there'll be other contenders that will come along. There'll be hot contenders if he can beat them. He's, he'll go down as a real good, solid heavyweight champion. Well, one of the things that makes him so solid is diligent training. As Gil mentioned, he's been in training for more than three months. But most of it was in anticipation of the fight that many believe will define and identify his career. Now it may never take place. But Evander Holyfield goes on about his business, despite the disappointment of the Tyson cancellation. People, you know, talk about the $30 million. It wasn't in my pocket. I didn't lose it. And uh, in life, we always hope for the best. And I guess in this situation, it didn't come about. It was to have been the biggest financial payoff in boxing history, albeit one of the most controversial. But on Friday, October 18, the next fight of the century, Holyfield Tyson, fell apart. The champion claims it was the one phone call he had least expected. My manager, Shelly Finkel, and my promoter, Dan Duver, left message telling me to call them like something had really happened. In general, I didn't think about boxing. I thought maybe something had happened with Lou got sick or something like that and something you know bad had happened and when I called and they said you know you heard about the fight I said, no it's, you know you know Tyson injury the fight is called off probably the costliest long-distance phone call Holyfield ever made but one of this champion's hallmarks is extraordinary patience Happy birthday, to be no cloud of gloom, a birthday party, a few interviews, 
And it was off to the World Series to cheer on the hometown Braves. I think that was the best thing for me. That was my first time ever going to a World Series. And out of seven games, I got an opportunity to see six. We, we didn't win, but, you know, it was a lot of excitement. And I think uh, emotionally it took a lot out of me, you know, traveling back and forth to uh, uh, Minnesota. But, you know, I had a, I had a good time, and, and really, uh, I think that took a lot of pressure off me. With a frustrating whirlwind of a week behind him, Holyfield returned to Houston to resume training. It was business as usual for one of boxing's most diligent workers. It's a great shirt. Oh, thank you. I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. The same schedule, the same intensity applied even to bowling night, a weekly training camp ritual. When you work hard, you need some some form of relaxation. And when I I get an opportunity to bowl something that you know I love to do, but it's competitive. I get to bowl against you know, my brothers and, and other members of the, in the camp. But they give everybody that equal opportunity because it's not like I'm so much better than them and bowling, even though I beat them. But, <laughs> <laughs> Powerful wrists, but absent from the ring since punching George Foreman back in April. I told him I would like to fight since I'm already in shape. You know, it's just like going to work and find out that, you know, you ain't going to get paid. Who want to work and not get paid? And I asked, was it possible for them to find someone that's training now or someone who's going to accept, accept the challenge? So now he returns to Atlanta as the undisputed hometown heavyweight champ and in so doing, takes a $25 million pay cut. I was raised there, and it's my hometown, and I truly feel that this is the only opportunity they would probably get to have a heavyweight championship fight in their town. It's, it's a little pressure, but you know, I look forward to it. So Evander Holyfield's career moves forward, much to the dismay of Don King, Mike Tyson, and their compadres, who accuse Evander of ducking Tyson. The champ views it differently. He will fight on his terms and his terms only. They don't get to me, they get to the people. And they have the world and everybody in boxing thinking that Holyfield has lost his opportunity. How can I lose the opportunity when I'm the champion? And you know, and I try to tell people, you know, I didn't lose. Here's a man lost his opportunity. I have something that he wants if he really wants it. And why should I have to uh, run behind him and, and not fight because he got injured? I didn't get injured, and it's not like I lost my chance of lifetime. I, I haven't lost anything. Especially not his integrity, which may be the most expensive prize in Evander Holyfield's vast portfolio. A champion who sees his job as to fight, not to wait. And now we won't have to wait too much longer to see Holyfield in the ring for this title defense against Burt Cooper. The World Boxing Council says that if Holyfield loses, its title is vacated. But both the WBA and the IBF see the heavyweight championship being on the line here tonight, with Cooper having a chance to win those two belts. And for more on the man who finds himself in this position of opportunity and on the fight itself, we go upstairs to Larry Merchant. Up front, what I'm gonna do now is shill for a fight, or more accurately, for boxing. What tonight is about is this. Champions like Evander Holyfield fight journeymen like Burt Cooper between major fights. These interludes give us a chance to watch the champion do his stuff. Sometimes we're surprised when they turn out to be more difficult than we anticipated, which could happen tonight. And about every 50 years in the heavyweight division, a Braddock beats a Bear or a Douglas beats a Tyson. These interludes also provide an opportunity for the cynics who flower in boxing to throw up their hands and flex their intellects and say, how can he fight that guy? Well, how can the twins play the Indians? How can the Bulls play the timber, Timberwolves? How can the Bills play the Colts? And how could Bert, how could Becker play a tennis match against Homo Helm of Tasmania in the U.S. Open? While you figure out the answers to those questions, let's take a look at a man for whom Christmas came very early this year. Hello? 
we got the fight? I'll be there. It was Sunday, November 17. Bertram Blair Cooper was minding his own business when suddenly the telephone rang. In an instant, a journeyman heavyweight was thrust into a championship fight. Is there a recent precedent? Believe it or not, yes. It was December 12, 1986, when James Bone Crusher Smith substituted for Tony Tubbs as a challenger to Tim Witherspoon's WBA heavyweight title. On one week's notice, Bone Crusher delivered a startling first-round knockout. That now serves as Burt Cooper's fantasy. But who is Burt Cooper, and where did he come from? He fights out of Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, and was once a protege of Joe Frazier. The Philadelphia gyms have historically turned out some of the toughest brawlers in boxing history, none tougher than Smokin' Joe. Cooper's admiration for his mentor spawned an uncanny resemblance in the ring. He became Smokin' Burt Cooper, Joe Frazier's left hook inheritor. He taught me a whole lot, you know, uh, you know, the boxer skills and stuff, and, you know, you know, how to respect people and stuff like that, because I was real young, you know. Uh, you know, what to, what to do in the boxer game, press conferences, stuff like that. He taught me the whole ropes. We like two of a kind. You know, we're two of a kind. <laughs> you know, his song he always sang to me. We're two of a kind. But in June of 1987, the 209-pound blown-up cruiserweight lost an eighth-round TKO at the hands of Carl the Truth Williams. After uttering the words, quote, I realized after the fight I'm not a heavyweight, Cooper split his ties to Joe Frazier and went back to the 195-pound division. For the next two years, Burt Cooper struggled, losing to men like Everett Martin and Nate Miller. He would spend most of his time impersonating Mike Tyson in sparring sessions, because whenever anyone would get a shot at the then heavyweight champion, Burt Cooper's stocky build and aggressive style made for the perfect preparation. In the ring, there was more disappointment. Even George Foreman handpicked Cooper as an opponent on his comeback trail in June 1989. No, I didn't sleep for three days. I was partying, you know, three days straight. And I tried to fight Foreman, whatever I was thinking about, Gary, go to bed. But all the while, Burt Cooper kept coming. In August of 1990, he lost a hard fought 12 round decision to Ray Mercer. And Riddick Bowe knocked him out in the second round. He had become, in the classic sense, an opponent. Then suddenly last month, Burt Cooper scored an impressive knockout of Joe Hip. On the strength of four consecutive wins, he was anointed to step in for Francesco Damiani. A couple of obvious questions come to mind. Was Burt Cooper in training a mere six days before this fight? Is he ready to step into the ring? Burt Cooper never fulfilled the dreams of Joe Frazier. He mimicked heavyweight champion Mike Tyson in sparring sessions, but never achieved any significant status in the division. Yet here he is, presumably in fighting shape and facing Evander Holyfield for the heavyweight title. I never went to the Olympics, okay? I never went to the Olympics. Uh, um, uh, I never got offered a million dollars to sign a con contract, okay? I never was in a gym with the Nautilus and everything, you know? I came out of Slaughterhouse, okay? I never had an opportunity Holyfield had. And uh, I think, uh, well, I know that I have more determination, dedication, and, the and desire to win the heavyweight championship in the world. Will heavyweight boxing ever regain an even keel? Probably not. But if Burt Cooper should by chance pull off this upset, Buster Douglas's accomplishment in Tokyo could become a mere footnote in heavyweight history. And now there is Burt Cooper, live on this, the biggest night of his boxing life. There was a time a few years back when Burt Cooper was a number of a prospect to assume that someday he'd get a title shot. But he told us yesterday that he long ago gave up on that. Watching him, I'm reminded of a one-time unknown challenger named Ron Stander who fought Joe Frazier for the title. Ron Stander's wife said the night before the fight, it's like putting a Volkswagen into the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> But well, this guy can fight some. He's like a temperamental, big European car. Sometimes he just goes off the road and decides to stay there, but sometimes he can really go. Well, and you say Gil Clancy, through much of his career, he wasn't beaten in fights, but he gave them away. He that, lost them himself. That's correct. Correct. He has five knockouts on his record. 
but he's never was counted out. He just makes up his mind against George Foreman. He stopped on his stool. I mean, those kind of defeats. But when he wants to take punches and he's determined, as he was against Ray Mercer, you could hit him with anything and you don't get him out of there. He fought a 12-round war with Ray Mercer in which he split Mercer's lip and broke his jaw. Mercer got the decision, but he'll never forget Burt Cooper. That's what got him here. He's won his last four fights by knockout. They were not against name opponents, but he's got a name opponent tonight. And here he comes. Hey, hey, come inside. Come on. Let's go. Come on. The arena holds 17,000. Promoters anticipated that 14,000 of the seats will be filled. And indeed, if perhaps not quite that many, there is a sizable crowd on hand. In a moment, they'll see the spotlight fall on their hometown heavyweight champ. His life, there's nothing like being a conquering hero and coming home. That, especially defending the heavyweight championship of the world. And he's got an uncharacteristic smile on his face as he come up. This fight probably has cost him three or four hundred thousand dollars because he could have gotten that much more money to fight in Atlantic City or Las Vegas. Well, again, he wanted the hometown people behind him and they're here. has had 26 fights and has won them all and now the crowd goes into the characteristic chant that dominated the audio portion of the World Series for the three games that were played here in Atlanta I don't know if it's politically correct anymore to do a tomahawk chop but it may be the most appropriate place for it because they're looking for Holyfield to use the chop in the ring And certainly Cooper will be hoping to be brave. 26-0, 21 KOs, the overwhelming majority of those fights in the cruiserweight division. Remember, he only became a heavyweight less than three years ago. And we'll look at the tail of the tape, and you will see that among several advantages, one of them is that Evander has a significant height advantage over Cooper, three and a half inches in his favor. Cooper five pounds heavier, Holyfield the more mature of the two fighters at 29 years of age. I think we should point out here, Jim, that Holyfield really didn't weigh 210 at the weigh-in. He wore his shoes and his uh, sweats on. Uh, he's been training for two and a half of the last three months with great intensity. His weight really was down around 26 or 27. Punch that numbers, Larry. And here we have a, a cross-section view of how active these fighters are and the kind of punches they throw and how accurate they are. And you can see Holyfield lands a very high percentage of the shots he throws. And here you see the number of jabs as well as hard punches they will throw. And for Cooper, the jab is just a rumor. And the rules of the bout with Harold Letterman. Evander the Holyfield is smoking Bert Cooper will fight tonight using a combination of rules from the Georgia State Athletic Commission, the IBF, and the WBA. Three judges will score the fight on the 10-point must system. No standing gate count, no three knockdown rule, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And Jim, if the fight is stopped because of a cut produced by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after six rounds have been completed. It's a technical draw up to the end of the sixth round. Harold, are we sure there's no three knockdown rule? <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. No three knockdown rule in a world title fight. All right, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions.
Ladies and gentlemen, Main Events Monitor Productions, in association with Rick Parker presents, and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, let me have your attention, please. Last week, one of boxing's fine young champions was injured in an automobile accident. Tonight, he's home and well on the road to recovery. He's a two-time world champion and currently holds the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship of the world. His name, Vinny Pazienza. On behalf of the fans here in Atlanta, Georgia, and the millions of fans watching around of, of the world, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause and a wish for a speedy recovery to the Paz. We love you, Vinny. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is sanctioned by the Georgia State Boxing Commission, Chairman Lindsey Rouse, Commissioners in attendance, Dr. Ron Stevens, Paul Carter, and Dr. Chris Vaughn. The Chief of Officials, Jerry Michael. Physicians in attendance, Dr. Victor Bouquet, Dr. Jack Burge. The timekeeper, Phil Latigo. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Pruitt. This bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor at Ringside, Al Goodman, and the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor in Attendance, Alberto Sarmiento. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system are Isidro Rodriguez, John Rupert, and Sheila Harmon Martin. And the man in charge of the action, once the bell rings, working for the 56th time in a title bout, is referee Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing the black trunks with silver trim, weighing an even 215 pounds. He has a professional record of 26 victories with seven defeats. And he has demonstrated his punching power, scoring 23 KOs in those 26 victories. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number 12 by the IBF, fighting out of Salem, Virginia, the challenger, Smokin' Burt Cooper. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent, wearing the blue and gold colors and weighing an even 210 pounds. This 1984 this Olympic bronze champion. medalist was the, the first of his great 84 U.S. Olympic team to win a world title as a professional. That was for the Cruiserweight Championship. He now is a two-time world champion with a perfect record of 26-0, 21 knockout victories. Here, Ladies You're and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, presenting... The undisputed, undefeated, All right, this is heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Hill, Hill, Holy Hill. If he goes right there, I'm not going to call it low, okay? Now, this is for the championship of the world. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on. Come on. Question in my mind, Gil. Since Holyfield looks dry and a little cold, will he come out here and really just take it out of Cooper immediately, let him know he doesn't have a chance to win, or is he going to let Cooper build his confidence? Well, you know, I, I think this first round is very significant. It's again, in, significant again in front of the hometown people maybe trying a little too hard you have to remember he, he hasn't had a fight in 217 days and Bert Cooper has been an active fighter and while Cooper has broken a sweat and does look warmed up Evander Holyfield as Larry Merchant pointed out is completely dry and Holyfield starts out establishing the jab Cooper throws a long right hand and misses Evander will not want to let Cooper inside with his face on his chest that's where Bert is most effective Good body punches by Holyfield. Cooper loses his balance. He was in serious trouble there for a moment. And Holyfield hit him twice when he got himself straight. Holyfield wobbled him, wobbled him a little bit with that left hook. And he got an uppercut in there too. Cooper is groggy for a second. 
Holyfield with a chance for an uncharacteristic early knockout. He's not normally that kind of fighter. It's been six years since Evander Holyfield scored a first round knockout. Back when he weighed about 180 pounds. Was a beauty, and down goes left. Bert Cooper. It's a left hook in the body, Jim. Was the punch that really hurt him? After the right hand, he dug a left hook underneath. Beautiful left hook to the body. Long time to go in the first round. Cooper comes over the top with a right, but he left himself open. There's that quick right hand of Cooper's on the inside. Very effective with that right hand, Cooper. He looks as though his head is clearing. Get those punches up. Look, look. Hey, hey, get those punches up. Come on. You see a guy go down like a body shot. In this division, you think of Tyson Spinks. Another right hand right on the button, but that time Cooper didn't budge. Come on, man. Keep him up. Let's go. Well, Evander is surprising me. He's really not using any lateral movement at all. He's right there. He's fighting. Fighting with a fighter. And this is what he said he wouldn't do. The next time you go down there, it's going to cost you a point. Come here, come on, come on. Evander didn't, 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 really didn't like that low blow. Pulled his trunks down even further. Now Cooper is starting to land that right hand over the top. He's gotten it in there twice. Holyfield off balance after missing the right, but he comes back with a left to the body. And Cooper's covering up again. Well, Evander is getting the best of this round, but he certainly is fighting a Cooper-type round. I agree with you, Gil. We all thought that Cooper was a good opponent for Holyfield because he would have to box and move against him as he will against big heavyweights, including Tyson. But he's elected to take the initiative. You you get inside, stay, yeah. stay close to him as you can. When you get in there, dig that body. Okay? Yeah. Come on, pants out. You just heard in the corner, they're telling him to go for the body. Apparently, they saw a soft underbelly there. And Holyfield was following orders, apparently, because that was as wicked a body shot as you'll see him ever land. And Larry, you spoke of the accuracy of Holyfield's punching before the fight. He landed 49 of 76 punches, according to Punch Stat in round one, 65% connect rate. And give Cooper credit for surviving that. He's, he's come here determined to fight. Of well, course, some people look at Holyfield Foreman and say, well, Evander doesn't have a heavyweight punching power. Well, this is the Cooper, in my opinion, at Ford Ray Mercer. He certainly got hurt with that left hook to the body, but he got up and he's bombing back, as you can see there. He's determined. We've got a war early on. And so many things can happen in a fight when guys are fighting the way the Holyfield is fighting Cooper. They, they can bang heads, they can get busted up. I mean, I'm sure that they're very concerned in Holyfield's corner. In my opinion, he can, he can use lateral movement to just completely outbox Cooper, but he's, he's chose to fight him and get him out of there. A lot of people asked Holyfield's co-trainer Lou Duva about the mental adjustment problem of fighting somebody on one week's notice, and Duva said, well, I want my guy to get hit a couple of times. It'll clear his head and wake him up. Well, he's been hit a couple of times, Jim. We also have to wonder, Gil, whether this crowd enthusiasm hasn't stirred Holyfield up. Well, that's what we were talking about. He's fighting in front of his, his hometown fans, and he may be trying to be a little too impressive. He's got nailed with a couple of pretty good punches this round. Holyfield digs a left to the chest. Cooper has landed two or three straight rights. Well, you know, most Philadelphia fighters are left hookers, but you have to you have to really watch Bert Cooper's right hand. It's a sneaky, short right hand. 
that's one area where he's gotten a lot better. He was almost exclusively a left hooker early in his career. Of course, that was what Frazier was teaching. Right hand to the body by Holyfield. Cooper wobbles again. Good uppercut by Cooper. That was the Mike Tyson combination. Wide right hand that bring the right hand underneath. Good left to the body by Cooper inside. And the right hand. There's that sneaky right hand right on the button. Since the knockdown midway through round one, it's been an even fight. Round two coming to a close. Bert Cooper establishing himself. Evander Holyfield banging away. Sit down on this round, you understand? Sit down on him. Stop tying him up. Let him fire. So use your defense. Because when you make him fire, make him miss him, then hit him in that body. You see? If you're tying him up, you use a lot of energy. Deep breath. Yes. All right, now take a deep breath. Come on, pull him. Suck it in. That's it. Suck it in. Keep hitting that body. Slip his punches on your way in. Keep hitting that body. Going third round, right? Yeah, third round. All right, third round. Third round. That's right, take a deep breath. You're hitting him good to the body. Be first. Don't let him get off him. Come body, that's what you're doing. This guy. Huh? Don't, don't be tying him up. Use your defense. Walk right around. Walk right around. It's pretty it's early for a fighter to be asking what round it is, Gil. So All right, then walk I don't know how much they're longer he's prepared to go at this pace. But on the other hand, they're telling Holyfield in his corner play a little bit more defense. Holyfield lands a left hook, and Cooper wobbles again. Cooper grins as if to say you didn't hurt me, that usually means you did. And that's exactly what he did with Ray Mercer. He'd take those bombs right on the button, and then he'd grin at Mercer. I think uh, Cooper's soft spot is to the body, and I really think that's where uh, Georgie Benton told Holyfield to go to work. To the body. Yeah, the instruction was quit tying him up. You waste a lot of energy that way. Bang to the body instead. Come on, fight out. Easier said than done when the man puts his head right on your chest all the time. And again, even though Holyfield, in my opinion, is winning the fight, he's fighting Cooper's fight. And there's that big, there's that sneaky right hand of Bert Cooper's. And Holyfield wobbles in the corner. The champion in trouble. Cooper bangs away. Holyfield almost goes down. Mills Lane's going to call it a knockdown and give him the count. Evander Holyfield floored in the third round by Burt Cooper. And a long way to go. You've got high drama in Atlanta. Another right hand lands flush. There's that sneaky right hand. In serious, serious trouble. And he's overworking that right hand. A long way to go. Holyfield almost went down again. Holyfield just really doesn't know where he is right now. His head is starting to clear. He's right fighting now. on heart alone right now, Jim. Heart alone is keeping a van of Holyfield up. And Cooper may have punched himself out a little bit with that flurry. Oh, what a right hand by Holyfield. And now it's Cooper who is standing stock still. A sensational right cross Holyfield landed to start this rally. But Burt Cooper won't go down. You're looking at one of the men of Holyfield. Better watch out and better remember defense. Believe me, right at this moment, anybody can get hit, can go. Holyfield misses the right. Cooper lands. Here comes Evander, though. Said one of the memorable rounds in recent heavyweight history. It isn't even over yet. Evander is fighting strictly with heart at the moment, Jim. No brains, no smarts, just trying to outgut the other guy. 
There's that sneaky right hand again. Bang, right on the Holyfield chin. Evander is wobbling as the round comes to a close. It doesn't get much better than that, but it shocked a lot of people. Here we'll find Cooper coming in. Though he was tired, there, there's the punch that really hurt Holyfield. Paying the price of not fighting the fight he planned for. And here, this is just an example of one man's incredible determination, Gil. He has never been knocked down. Tremendous conditioning. And he took over that round with about a minute and a half to go. One punch by either guy can change things completely around. Well, you saw it happen twice in that round, gentlemen. And there's that right hand. I, I, as I say, Bright works that overtime. Look at the will of Evander Holyfield, staring Cooper in the face and pounding away. And what about the will of Bert Cooper? He's got, he got nailed with some He told us yesterday, yesterday he would round. never quit again. That's exactly right. He's proven it now. We questioned him about that, Jim. Took his hat off, said he'd never quit. I guarantee I'll never quit, and he's not quitting. A left hook bomb inside by Cooper slows Holyfield down for a second. For the life of me, I don't know why Evander Holyfield is not using lateral movement to going side to side. He should be boxing. Could he be badly overtrained, Gil? Well, that certainly is a possibility. Three months in the gymnasium, changing opponents. Evander told us that in the last 10 days he slowed down his training because he was really ready more than two weeks ago. That's very dangerous, particularly for a big fight. Cooper's punches seem to have slowed down now, Jim. I think that right cross in the middle of the last round from punches. Holyfield had a but lot he, to... he would be dangerous, Bert Cooper, if he was falling down. There's that right hand again. This appears to be one of those fights, Gil, that Holyfield said he wasn't going to fight anymore, that he wasn't going to just go in and trade punches. Larry, I just had a suspicion that, that Holyfield was going to fight this kind of a fight, and I still felt he had win the fight. But again, Bert Cooper has been the more active fighter by far, with Holyfield having a 217-day layoff and Cooper having four fights I think certainly has helped, helped Bert Cooper and this has been another largely even round with both men having big flurries Cooper grinning again Holyfield lands an uppercut every time they break from one of those clinches Evander has to watch for that right hand what Bert Cooper does, he takes his right foot, he steps over and chops with that right hand. I'm surprised they haven't spotted that in Evander Holyfield's corner. But Cooper is definitely slowing down now yeah, they in the latter part of this round. Walking to his right, that's what he does. They, ha they have a heavyweight fight here every 21 years, but they sure have a good one. <laughs> Harold Letterman, how do you score it? Larry, 39 to 36, three rounds to one, Evander Holyfield. The third round, they definitely called it 10-9, Bert Cooper. Even with the knockdown, I thought Evander Holyfield fought back enough from a 10-8 to bring it back up to 10-9 late in the round. So I've got it 3-1, an extra point for Evander in the first round. Oh, I'll give him. Let's do it. Some water. We're wearing him down. We're wearing him down. Not just walk around him and punch shot him with the right hand, hit him in the body. You have a good defense now. Right back in there, baby. Right back All in there. Right. Now the guy's Where's the mouthpiece. 
Bert Cooper may be the only consumer in America with more money to spend this Christmas than he anticipated about a month ago. And if he keeps this up, he's going to have a lot more money in future Christmases. It very well may be. And in a band of Holyfield's corner, they told, told him to walk Bert Cooper around inside and bang him to the body. But that's what Cooper's been doing to him. Up there, the big way in. And now Cooper's, Cooper's in trouble. Well. Holyfield banging away with the right hand, but Burt won't go down. Long rest. And I think that Holyfield well, needs it more than Cooper, point. despite... It's not as easy on the champion as we anticipated. And this is sure one of those times. First time I've seen a band with a little bounce drop. Down since an amateur fight in 1979. He did not go down to the canvas tonight, but it was scored a knockdown by the referee. Let's see history in front of us. Let's see how the boxing... Cooper's...
let's go to Larry Merchant with the heavyweight champion of the world. Larry? Evander, congratulations. Uh, that was an easy one. No, it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> Barry Cooper was very game, and uh, for a guy to jump in there uh, not too long for a notice, you know, he fought his hard out, and I have to commend him, you know, for for you wanting did, the title. Did, did you jump on him early instead of boxing because you felt that he couldn't be in good condition? Well, not at all. Uh, uh, Bert Cooper, the type of guy, wants to get the momentum. You know, he, it's easy for him to stand there. Is, you know, my strategy is to go out there and try to frustrate him from the start, try to uh, make sure is he in condition to jump on him where he has to use that energy early and not just coast through the, uh, the early rounds and have some for the later. Uh, I round. guess the real thing we all want to know was how badly were you hurt in the fourth round? Well, you know, I wasn't hurt badly. I, I don't know how bad one could be hurt. You know, he hit me with good shots. And is, uh, I guess, it would be quite common if you get hit with consecutive punches like I got hit with at the time and uh, the point of recovery. Well, Evander, you were reeling around there almost like you didn't know quite where you were. You know, I, I, I was. I, I feel that I had, uh, I had everything together. But when you get hit with a good shot, it's not like you can bring your body back uh, together like you want to. My mind was there, and I realized, you know, that he hit me with a good shot, and I was trying to keep him. Hitting, uh, getting hit with another shot, but I guess at the time didn't have control of the whole body at the time. Did your conditioning get you through? through? Well, yeah, yeah. Conditioning is a big part of it. Conditioning is when uh, you get hit with a good shot and you're able to come back as quick as if I, you know, if I did. You threw a tremendous number of uppercuts in that fight. That landed. How did he take those punches? <laughs> well, I, I feel that uh, when you're in a situation, Brett Cooper, you know, don't take nothing from him. He got a lot to gain. And by coming out and taking the fight on the short notice, and he just he was geared up and he came out to fight and and wasn't taking nothing for granted. Were you trying to be too impressive in your hometown, trying to get him out of there too fast? Do you feel? Well, not at all. I, I went out there and uh, I did what I felt that was right at the time. You know, I boxed him and he got in there to make it uh, more of a, a brawl. I couldn't get away from him fast enough to use the boxing tactics because it was. Early in the round, it was just brute strength, and he was he was strong enough to force me into fighting uh, a more of a, a brawling type fight right then. And there. It didn't it didn't really look like you ever boxed him the way you said you would box. You you indicated you were never going to get in one of those slugfests again. Well, you know you go you go in you go mm -hmm. into a fight with a thought of plan. Well, I'm a boxer's guy, but uh, uh, he was uh, aggress aggressive enough to put me in a fight that I didn't want to be in, but I was forced to fight that fight uh, that he would still load the rounds. All right, let's look ahead now. You've been in the gym for almost every day for three, three months. months. What are your plans? Is, are you going to just wait to see the outcome of Mike Tyson's legal difficulties before you get back in the gym? Just how are you going to go about it? Actually, I really just, I would like to go back and rest. Uh, I truly believe that. Been in the gym a long time, stuck a little starch out. But, you know, I, I need to rest and get myself back mentally and not, you know, worry about Mike Tyson problem or anybody else problem right now. Just, you know, get plenty of rest and be ready for the you know, next fight. Uh, just one quick question to Lou. Do you think that you're just going to go on ice now until Tyson's difficulties are resolved? No, we ma we manage uh, we manage and train Evander Holyfield. He's his own man. Uh, we're not going to wait around for Mike Tyson. When Mike Tyson becomes available, we'll be glad to fight him the following day. Up until then, he's going to do his own. He's going to do his own so, thing. So there is a chance he might take on another opponent before Tyson. Absolutely not. We're not going to just sit around and wait for Tyson. We'd like to fight Tyson tomorrow if we could. But if he's not available, then we'll go on to somebody else. I don't really think you want to fight Mike Tyson tomorrow after a night like this, but, <laughs> but congratulations, Evander. Back to you, Jim and All Gil. All right. Thanks very much, Larry. Gil, time to assess what we saw. The first question, how much of it was bad Holyfield? How much was great Cooper? Well, as Evander Holyfield himself said, Bert Cooper made him fight the kind of fight that Bert Cooper wanted to fight. In other words, Bert Cooper was doing the dictating in there. And as we had mentioned earlier in the show, 
Evander beat him at his own game. That's just about what happened in the fight. So that's a good statement on Evander's ability to adjust. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. He fought Bert Cooper's fight, and he still won the fight. Does his chin become more questionable than ever before after the knockdown in round number three, or what was scored a knockdown? No, I don't think so, Jim. You know, if a heavyweight, one good heavyweight, especially a guy that has a snap on the punch that Bert Cooper has, if he, if he hits anybody right, they're going to wobble. And that's what uh, Evander Holyfield did. Let's see if Bert can wobble Larry Merchant. Larry? Okay, Bert, that was a great fight you put on, particularly the fact that you didn't have a long time to prepare for this fight. But as you promised us, you didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. No, no. The only, I would just say, I would just, uh, I don't know, uh, just the referee, you know, you see something he didn't like. Yeah, so why, didn't, why didn't the referee stop the fight whenever you, Evander was in trouble uh, like in that? In the fourth round, you hurt Evander. Uh -huh. Are you going to be looking back on that round for the rest of your life, asking yourself, why couldn't I have finished him? Yes, yeah. You'll be asking but, uh, yourself, why did Mills Lane step yeah, in and stop but, uh, the fight? You but are we, are we get another chance, I hope, you know. I hope we get another chance before he retire. You know? the, the, yeah. Do you think that somehow this fight, this showing, uh, uh, puts away the, re the your career, which has been up and down and and uh, erratic, uh -huh. and that this puts you on a different track as an athlete? Yes, exactly. No more ESPN fights. No more, <laughs> no more ESPN fights. No more, uh, yeah, ESPN fights. No more ESPN fights. Well, unless it's, uh, it's a little, you know, something to get in shape with. You no know, fight to uh, stay in shape. Thank you very much, Bert. We'll be happy <coughs> to have you back here on each HBO. Fight, uh, uh, back to you, Jim. All right, Larry. Well, we sure wouldn't have said that after Cooper fought our own George Foreman. George made Bert quit on the stool after two rounds, but of course, Cooper says that that was after a long weekend of partying, three days without sleep, and certainly entirely different conditions than the kind that Bert brought into the ring tonight. George Foreman joins us once again live from Houston, and George, what do you think? Most exciting fight you've ever seen? Boy, I was never so nervous in all my life. So excited, the best fight I've seen. But I can tell you this, the referee should be crowned. <laughs> he saved uh, Evander Holyfield, and yet at the same time, he stopped the fight, didn't give the other guy, and stand in eight count. Strange happenings in the heavyweight championship fight. I don't like it. Evander Holyfield, I want you to know I want one more chance at him. And uh, I'm going to tie the referee's hand, put handcuffs on him. Feed him hamburgers and cheeseburgers where he can't move around and stop me. And I'm going to be heavyweight champ of the world again. So you're suggesting that you are in sympathy with the Burt Cooper second we heard in the background there saying why didn't he stop the fight when Holyfield is in trouble. Is that right? Well, you're a journalist. Tell it like it is. As Howard Cosell would say, tell it like it is. And the people at home, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people some of the time. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. pretty close. Hey, George, <laughs> I've got to guess that what you saw tonight convinces you that in another shot at Evander Holyfield, you're going to knock him out and be world champion again. Is that's, that right? There's no, that's no doubt in my mind, but there's a young Jimmy Ellis somewhere out there lurking to do the same thing to me that Burt Cooper did to Evander Holyfield today. Now, I've definitely got to stop eating. I've got to stop eating. I've got to stop eating. <laughs> got to stop We're eating. not really sure that's possible. What kind of shape are you in? Oh, I'm in good shape, healthy, but I believe there's someone sabotaging me. Every time I finish working out, there's a barbe plate of barbecue, plate of baked beans, chili, and all that stuff. Somebody there's a rumor, George, there's a rumor that you weigh 280 pounds when you went into training. That's a lie. I was only 279. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> All right, George, we will anyway, see Anyway, I enjoyed the fight. It was a wonderful night. I've never seen you not enjoy a fight, so that was the uh, <laughs> safest prediction of the evening. I met James Steptoe, Joe, this house. He yeah. let me use this house for HBO, and he's, give, he's feeding me. All right, come and see us in Reno in a couple weeks, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Jody. All right, thanks, George. Larry Merchant joins us once again at ringside. And, Larry, amazing stuff, huh? <laughs> It sure is. The theater of the unexpected strikes again. Bingo. I guess there's an old saying that you can't come home again. Holyfield showed that you can come home again, but it isn't easy. <laughs> Boy, he, he took a lot of shots today. I think he's been in the gym a little bit too long, but give the other guy credit. Just as I gave Buster Douglas credit in Tokyo, the other guy came, fought his heart out to, to seize the opportunity that is there to win the richest crown in sports but give Holyfield credit when he was threatened, when he was wobbled, when he was hurt, pulled himself together like a champion, pulled the fight out, 
onward and upward. Hey, say for a second that you're the manager of a Riddick Bow or a Michael Moore or a Lennox Lewis. A promoter calls you tomorrow and says, I want you to fight Burt Cooper. What do you say? I think they'll want to fight Burt Cooper. I think, uh, uh, first of all, Burt Cooper had a lot taken out of him. He took a tremendous number of hard blows to the head. Uh, he ought to take six months off. But all of these young fighters trying to prove who they are, trying to prove championship worthy, are now going to put him on the list as a good opponent, someone perhaps they can look better than Holyfield did, uh, and project themselves ahead. I wouldn't be surprised uh, in our night of the heavyweights, February 1st, if Burt Cooper wasn't fighting uh, one of the heavyweights who are in there. All right, we'll look forward to that. And since we've had the rare privilege of having Gil Clancy with us tonight, let's get one more word from him. You heard George Foreman criticize Mills Lane's stoppage, which you called a great one. What do you think of what George said? Well, I, I, I think that, uh, first of all, that Mills Lane stopped the fight exactly when he should have stopped the fight. He, he very well couldn't have stopped the fight. Evander Holyfield was never even on the deck. They counted, they counted, they gave him an eight count that he wasn't even on the deck. And after that, he it came on at the end of the round. So I, I think that Mills Lane did, a, did the proper thing when he uh, allowed the fight to continue with Holyfield and did the proper thing in stopping the fight when Bright Cooper was in bad trouble. All right, Gil, if you'll move away, we can ask Mills himself about these situations. Hi, Step in here a second, Mr. Judge. Thank you, Mills I Lane Just criticize you again, Mills. What thank can you, I tell you? you? He's ripping you eight ways from Sunday. We're going to take a look at the end of the fight. George Foreman has criticized your stoppage of this fight, saying, hey, Holyfield was in just as much trouble earlier in the fight. Tell us what went through your mind. Well, first off, you have to recognize that you have known what's going on before. He's been hit numerous times before. Then what happened is he lost the ability to defend himself, and he just was getting nailed. I mean, nailed and nailed and nailed. And as a matter of fact, one of his corner men that got great respect for him came in and said, thanks, Mills. It was time. And Bird himself said nothing but knowing what went on before. I mean, he'd been sh they took turns shellacking each other, but early in the fight when both of them were hurt, they still had resiliency. They could come back. But he just lost the ability to defend himself. And I mean, God, to get somebody killed uh, so seriously, I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I know it's the last thing you want. Now, just for one technicality for the record, there's no standing eight count in this fight, so you ruled Holyfield as a knockdown in round number three. That's correct. He, he would have fallen but for the ropes. And that is a knockdown in this state and in our state. All right. It's the first time he's been knocked down since 1979. Okay. There's a distinction Thanks, for you. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Mills. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. So that concludes what has been an exceptionally exciting night of heavyweight boxing for us from Atlanta. We've only got a few more little details to take care of with you tonight, starting with this one. And it's coming up as Undisputed Heavyweight Championship. Fell against the ropes. He stayed up and stayed in it. Seventh round late. Holyfield finally finds the mark, and the champion shows why he wears the belts. Mills Lane steps in and says, that'll do it. TKO, 258 of the seventh round. Evander Holyfield now 27 and 0 as a pro, and we'll be going down to Atlanta to hear from Charlie Steiner. He ought to have some pretty interesting observations on this fight. That'll be a little bit later on in Sports Center. Tom? So I'm Paul Runnels with CNN Headline Sports. One of the most exciting heavyweight fights in a long time, Saturday night in Atlanta. Evander Holyfield retains his title, but not before getting knocked around by Smoke and Burt Cooper. The champ went down in the third, but he wasn't out. Holyfield rebounded, got up. Referee Mills Lane then stepped in and stopped it with just two seconds left in the seventh round. No, I was disappointed. I, I wanted to fight, and, um, and a lot of time, a lot of times you can have a, a bad performance, but you know the win, winning uh, conquers all, and you get an opportunity to come back if you want to make it up. Much to the dismay of Evander Holyfield, Smoke and Burt Cooper was still smoldering in the third round of tonight's heavyweight title fight. Most thought the 22 to one underdog would be finished by that time. Instead. Cooper had Holyfield's hometown fans recalling a night 21 months ago when another underdog named Buster Douglas shocked then champ Mike Tyson. CNN's Fred Hickman has a story from Atlanta. Evander Holyfield looked as though he meant to end Burt Cooper's evening early. A crisp shot to the body in the first round, sending the challenger spinning to the canvas. That was an uh, unexpected body shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he fought a great fight. Um, he didn't let nobody down. He came to fight, and in and, and the sixth round that it was, you know, he fought every second, every minute in the fight, and you had to commend him for his hard work. 
and fight back Cooper did. The third was one of the more memorable heats in recent heavyweight history. Heavy blows landed by both men, with Cooper getting the best of it. Holyfield reeling to the ropes in what was ruled a knockdown. The first Holyfield has experienced in 12 years. I moved my heart, started boom, 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 boom. That's why I tired out fast. So my heart was beating fast. I was like, right, right excited, excited, you know? I said, oh boy, this is it. This is it. When I got hit with a good shot, but you know, I was, uh, I was aware of where I was at all the times. And I had my hands up and um, he was throwing good, good punish and shot. But you know, I could see the shots coming and I was aware, I, I was aware where I was at the time. And I realized that, you know, he gonna shoot himself out and I'm gonna be able to come back uh, with the counter punches, and in which I, I did. Holyfield fought his way back in that round, landing some drives of his own. And finally, during the seventh round, the champion cashed in, ringing Cooper's bell time after time without getting an answer. And then, just two seconds from the end of the round, veteran referee Mills Lane stepped in and called it a day. I was too tired. <laughs> we want to... We want to we want to argue after you know after I, you know after they stopped the fight and I was, I was just a little, I was a little tired he was too and so we want to argue I leave it to these guys to argue you know what I'm saying they seen it y'all seen it you know what I'm saying I don't feel like arguing just pay me let me tell you something wait until these fellas look at the tape and find and take and count the punches that he hit, that he hit him with the uppercuts and the hooks, 25 uppercuts. What do you want to do, scrape the guy off the canvas? This guy did everything but destroy him out there. This guy will be back to fight again. He didn't want to go down, he wanted to win. And um, he did everything he could while I was there. And, and I just wasn't able to get it. And so the day's work is done. Evander Holyfield retains his undisputed heavyweight championship of the world and moves to 27-0 in the process. But the ghost of Mike Tyson continues to haunt the hallways of the Omni in Atlanta. And the question, still on the minds of all boxing fans everywhere, had it been Mike Tyson instead of Burt Cooper, would Evander still be wearing the belts? In Atlanta, I'm Fred Hickman, CNN Sports. Well, at the very least, Cooper will now get his chances at some of the top to middle rank contenders in much larger paydays than he's used to. And who knows, Duva indicated if he gets a couple wins against those fighters and Holyfield beats Tyson, should they fight, a rematch might be in order. Anna? Evander Holyfield called his fight against Burt Cooper a no-win situation. He didn't mean that literally. The heavyweight champ knew if he knocked down Cooper early on, people would say he was supposed to. And if he struggled, people would want to know why he struggled. Cooper, who was a stand-in for a stand-in, went off as a 22-to-1 underdog. They nearly put him out in the third round. Mills Lane giving Holyfield a standing eight count. We went to the fifth round. Holyfield's glove is ripped. Needed a change, got a little reprieve, a little breather, and then in the seventh, time running down and running out for Cooper. Holyfield with the fierce combinations. Mills stops the fight. Holyfield stays unbeaten, but Cooper gets a moral victory, if it matters. And no more ESP in fights. No more, no more ESP in fights. No more, uh, yeah, ESP in fights. No more ESP in fights. Do you remember what you got hit with in the third that staggered you? I got hit with a good shot. I don't know if it was a left or right, but you know it was a good shot, and uh, he was throwing good, good, strong shot throughout the fight. I was able to get away from a, a lot of it, and I just got hit with one. You would not quit. You would not quit, and oh, you man, did what? not. And how important was that for you to stay in the ring as you did tonight? Oh boy, I'm talking about this is important. It's very important. If I would have quit or whatever, I've been, my name would been mud. You know what I mean? My name would been mud. And I told him. I will not quit. No more quitting. That's right, baby. No tell, more quitting. Tell me about the third round. Did you think you had Evander Holyfield put away? He was. He was put away. He was out. He was out. He figured he couldn't do nothing with me. So they said, uh, then, like then, then, then his, talking about his glove was split. Bill's I know they split it and stuff. And he had, hold up, Rick. And they didn't have time enough to let him rest and take the glove off and tape it up and stuff like that, you know? And stuff. And it was just a whole lot of political stuff. And so then... Then it seemed he came back, and the third round seemed to be perhaps the round of the year. Right, right, because, uh, like I said, he, I, if, if he wasn't going to wear, I damn sure wasn't going to wear. What about the thought of Mike Tyson and the specter of Tyson over this fight, this event, and perhaps down the road? Well, you know, uh, you know it's, it's hard to say. You know, he got, he got hurt, and, you know, I was looking forward to fighting him. But, you know, I realized that, you know, I got to do what's best for, uh, for you know, myself and, and not just look to aim just to fight one individual because it shows that you can get yourself caught up uh, wanting to fight someone else and someone else slip in the back and go and, and end it for you.
Following the fight, Holyfield spoke vaguely about retiring, but he is still signed to fight Mike Tyson, depending on the status of Tyson's rape charges coming up in January. Bob? Jonathan, uh, we had quite a treat this evening talking about Thanksgiving. A great fight between Evander Holyfield and Burt Cooper. Now, coming into this thing, we did not think it was going to be a great fight. Burt Cooper is a guy who's the third choice to fight, of course, after Mike uh, Tyson had to bow out with uh, rib injuries. November the 8th, that fight was scheduled for Las Vegas. Then Damiani was supposed to come in. He pulled out last Sunday with an ankle injury. Enter Burt Cooper, the kid out of Philadelphia. Very, very tough. He had a record of being a good puncher, but nobody expected him to be around the way he was around tonight. It was scheduled for 12. Cooper came out eh, pretty well in the uh, first round, but he was knocked down by Evander Holyfield. But in the third round, Cooper, showing this chin that we were going to see, was able to sting Evander Holyfield, the heavyweight champion, fighting before his hometown fans. You see, he went up against the ropes, and the ropes, frankly, were the only thing holding him up. Mills Lane, the referee, called it a knockdown. There is no standing eight count, or there was no standing eight count involved in this particular fight. Then the Heyman began both guys just trading blows throughout the fight in the fifth round it was just haymaker after haymaker and what we saw was a right uppercut doing a lot of damage uh, to uh, to uh, the uh, challenger Bird Cooper but in the seventh round is when it really started raining those right hands I mean 25 consecutive shots delivered to Cooper what was holding him up, nobody here has been able to figure that out yet, except for a lot of heart, a lot of chin, and a lot of stamina for a guy who, I, as I mentioned, did not have a whole lot of training. Mills Lane had seen enough. He finally stepped in and stopped the thing. Two seconds left in the round. A good referee, and Mills Lane is a good referee, does not keep track of the time. He was simply looking at his man, looking at Burt Cooper, finding that his neck was a little wobbly, that he was just being held up purely by guts and was not, was not able to really continue on too long. He was trying to keep the guy from getting hurt, basically. So he called the fight with two seconds left but an eventful evening Evander Holyfield knocked down for the first time since 1979 but still managing to get the TKO and moving to 27 and 0 on his career we're waiting for the champion to emerge from his locker room right now obviously he's got to be a little bit beaten down a little bit tired he could not put this guy away tonight we'll of course have a full report for you coming up on CNN Sports late night that'll be at 2 30 a.m. Eastern time 11 30 p.m. Pacific time but it has been quite a night in Atlanta and quite uh, not an easy payday at all for Evander Holyfield